Hello learners, welcome back to my channel Shraddha's Physics. In this part we will see, this is the general discussion of the bound state in an arbitrary potential and here we will see the continuity of the wave function and the boundary condition and the emergence of the discrete energy levels. Now let us start. So here first of all we will consider the time independent Schrodinger equation for a particle of mass m and suppose its total energy is E and it is moving in a one dimensional potential that is your U of x. Okay. So here the time independent Schrodinger equation will be d square psi by ds square because this is your one dimensional potential that is here we will consider only the x coordinate that is d square psi by ds square plus 2m by h cot square whole into E minus U of x into psi that is equal to 0. And this also can be written as d square psi by dc square will be equal to if I will take this total term into the right hand side then this will be equal to this e minus u of x if I will take common the negative sign then this will be plus u of x and this is minus e and if I will take to the right hand side then this is simply 2m by h cot square u of x minus e whole into psi ok this is your equation 1 and this is called the time independent Schrodinger equation. Now here we will see the relation between the energy and the potential. Then what are the basic condition that is the total energy may be greater than the potential energy or the potential may be greater than the energy. So here you can see there are the two condition that is maybe the potential greater than E or maybe the potential will be less than E. So this nature of the solution that is this uh, Schrodinger time independent equation it will depend on the energy and u that is the potential energy. This E is your total energy and u represents the potential. If the potential will be greater than E you can see here if u of x is positive and this is your higher value than that of your E then this u of x minus E then this total term on the right hand side this will be your positive since this 2m by h cot square it is your uh, some constant and it is also a positive quantity so the right hand side the total term will be positive. So here you can say that this d square psi by ds square on the left hand side it has the same sign as the wave function psi. Now you can see in this figure the wave function psi of x how it varies with this position x so it is convex to the x axis or you can say that this this will move away from the x axis ok. So this is the wave function how it varies with the position when the potential will be greater than that of your energy and the next case is when the potential will be less than that of your energy then you can see here this energy term is larger than that of your potential. So definitely this u of x minus e will be negative since this term is negative definitely we can say that this d square by psi by ds square it will be opposite to that of the psi that is the wave function that will travel along the suppose positive axis positive x axis then this d square psi by ds square it will travel along the negative x axis. So simply we can say that here in this second figure you can see this is your x coordinate and this one is your psi that is your psi of x you, you can see here in this case the psi of x is convex sorry concave to the x axis that is they will move towards the x axis ok. So this is your when the potential will be less than E then the wave will they will move towards the x axis or when the potential will be greater than that of your energy they will move away from the x axis. This is the basic difference between the when the potential will be greater than the total energy or when the potential energy will be less than that of your total energy. Now the boundary condition that demands the wave function to be continuous and continuously differentiable that is continuously differentiable means the first derivative will be continuous. So first of all when the potential is greater than that of your energy when this potential energy will be larger than that of your total energy then we can we can say that this x tends to plus or minus infinite then such a solution is not admissible if the potential energy is larger than that of your total energy everywhere. The condition is 
when the potential energy will be larger that is the potential energy is larger means suppose if we'll consider this is suppose uh, just imagine this is your box and here we will uh, discuss the application of this uh, part that is a boundary condition uh, how we will apply the boundary condition to a particle so later we will discuss on the application of this Schrodinger equation but let us consider here first suppose a particle is present in a box and this this wall is very very high or you can say that this wall is infinitely high okay or we can say that this potential is equal to infinite and suppose we have to apply some energy if we we'll apply some energy to this particle so you can see here in this case since this potential is very very high or we can say that this potential is very very larger than that of your energy that you will supply to the particle then in that case you can say that if x tends to plus or minus infinite then this solution is not admissible okay because this energy that is you are supplying to the particle it is very very less than that of your potential energy and this is this potential is infinite everywhere so in that case the solution is not admissible but when some cases this potential is larger than e or it may be in some cases the potential energy is somehow less than that of your energy in that case we can say that the solution can be continuous okay now here you can see if e is less than u of x the diverges as x tends to plus or minus infinite so such a solution is not admissible if e is less than u of x everywhere if this energy is less than the potential in some region and the energy is somehow greater than that of your potential energy in other region then the solution can be connected continuously okay now the second case is if the energy is larger than that of your potential energy that is the boundary wall that is infinitely high wall we can say that that wall is not infinite and here the energy you will supply that is much larger than that of your the potential and also we can say that this energy is positive okay the energy you are supplying is positive then this corresponds to the free state okay when the energy is larger than that of your potential we can say that that is called as the free state with the wave vector k equal to 2m by h cut into e minus u root over the wave vector and the energy they can have any continuous values and the energy spectrum is called the continuous in nature and particularly you should note that when this e is greater than u of x this is called the free state and the next is and here this energy is greater than zero and the next is when e is greater than u of x but is less than zero here when the energy is positive then that is called the free state but when e is less than zero then that is called the bound state that is the particle is bound inside a potential so the, and having the negative energy so the classical motion is this periodic and the energy and the wave vectors are constant to have some specific allowed values so here you can see what are the constant constant means the restriction okay so what are the restriction there exists at least one bound state when the energy is negative we can say that there must exist at least one bound state the spectrum of the bound state is discrete discrete means they are not continuous they they should have fixed values for a particular energy levels they have the fixed values and the energy eigen values are non degenerate non degenerate means non degenerate means if every energy eigen state they are differed by their energy eigen values then the system is called non degenerate that is they have different energy eigen values for this state the energy eigen value is different to that of this energy level and so on okay so then that is called the non degenerate when they have the same energy eigen value then that is called the degenerate state when they have the different eigen value energy eigen value then that is called the non degenerate state okay and here also if multiple bound state occur then they are alternately symmetric and anti symmetric with the increasing energy okay so these are the condition when the potential will be less than that of your energy and the energy will be negative in nature okay so in that case we can see these are some basic condition that is the at least they should have the one bound state 
and the bound state should be discrete in nature energy eigen values are non degenerate and if there is uh, more than one bound state or there is uh, there are multiple bound state so we can say that they are alternately symmetric and anti symmetric with the increasing energy okay so this is all for today thank you all